Oh, it's telling me if I want to leave. <laughs> want to leave? <laughs> You're live. You want to go? All right. I think we're here. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, I think, right? Hello. Happy Saturday, everybody. Hey, guys. Yeah, here we are. I Hello. see you. Yay. I see us. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Happy Saturday and welcome to Heal Profoundly hey. and Enduringly. I'm so excited. So, this, I had a show when I first started my Emerge Healing and Wellness Facebook page, and it was called Live with Laura. And so I moved from the cheese to this one. And uh, it just wasn't aligned for a while, but I am so excited because I got this download. I don't even remember when, it was a few weeks ago about doing this show. And man, we are already booked through the end of October. And I'm so excited because it's this opportunity to bring on so many different types of healers or medicine practitioners to be able to talk about what healing means to them, the depth of healing, what they most highly recommend to mm -hmm. get to the most profound and enduring level of healing. And so this is my passion. If you guys are not familiar with me, my name is Laura Mazzotta and I'm an Akashic therapist. So I've been a therapist for almost 20 years and have become a, an Akashic healer, a Reiki master over the past few years. And um, I've really developed, I've always had a passion for, of course, helping people heal, but this is a mission. It's truly a soul calling to assist people with healing at the deepest, most profound, most long lasting level possible. And I've found that through these practices and the level of efficiency and effectiveness, I cannot scream loudly enough. So I am bringing Daisy Farrell on with me today. So excited. Hi. She's a psychic medium and healer. And we are going to chat about the two most critical foundational factors that need to be in place for long-term healing. So Daisy, do you want to say hi and introduce yourself? Yes. Hey, everybody. I'm Daisy Farrell. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a psychic medium and healer, and I provide deep multidimensional healing for light workers so that they can fully integrate their shadow as their superpower. And I'm super thrilled to be here. I love talking about anything healing related. So I'm, I'm excited to just talk about all of this stuff. Cause we have a lot, we have a lot of fun things to discuss. So we have a lot of fun things to discuss today. Yes. We've been so excited. And every single time this I remember that this is coming up or the energy just comes into my field. It just gets stronger and stronger. So definitely make sure to tag those people that you think could yes. benefit from additional healing tips and tools and or share this out because we mm -hmm. need more and more people to know these honestly basic foundational things that are, are not available to us in the traditional medical community or in the traditional mental health community, at least not at this level of depth. And this is why we want to screen this from the rooftops and really spend some time with you guys today and see what's coming forward in your field too. So let us know how you're feeling. Say hello if you're popping on. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Hi, Hi Shalane. Shalane, I haven't seen you in so long. It's so good to have you here. Kira. hi. You are just so devoted and I love you. Thank you for being here. Marla, hi, honey. Happy Saturday. Hi. And congratulations to Marla. She is making huge changes in her life and I'm so excited. Yay. So, all right. So I want to see if you guys can guess first. I want to see what you guys believe are the two most critical foundational factors for making sure that the healing work you're doing lasts mm -hmm. and sticks and doesn't just come and go like a temporary band-aid. Oh, thank you for sharing, Shalane. I appreciate it. All righty, yeah. Hi, Barbara. Good to see you. Hi. All right, so just give us a couple. Mm -hmm. Lisa said, I'm recovering from what I can only describe as a full body migraine. You know what's so fascinating mm -hmm. is that that keeps coming up, Lisa. Mm -hmm. That keeps coming up. Like, I woke up this morning with like a an eighth of a migraine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I, you know, migraines are all about push, push, push energy. They're all about like that masculine, gotta go, gotta meet standards, expectations kind of energy. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing you can do is to do nothing when it comes to a migraine. Like I laid down and just meditated this morning and I feel so much better because it's, it's about listening to that message that's coming forward. But 
even friends of ours were in the hospital with an ocular migraine and then here you are having a migraine there's if you look on a girl in the universe on instagram which is um just it's just a handle of a underscore girl underscore keep going a girl in the universe um you're going to find the Schumann residence. And she was just saying this morning, this is all about digestive stuff, which I felt really nauseous since last night and headaches. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple other things she mentioned. Fatigue was one, but, um, there's been energy that's been coming in just in the past week that has literally never been heard of before. Like never had this level of energies this consistently and back to back. So the nope. fact that it's full body does not surprise me, Lisa. Oh, yeah. Power to the grid of connection. We all need a connection to hold the light for our unique vibration. Hi, Danielle. How are you, honey? Hi. Okay. So, and thank you for sharing, Keyrath. I really appreciate it. So, all right. I haven't seen anything come in here. Oh, Danielle says, based on my body, I venture Schumann is insane today. Exactly. Yeah. And Daisy and I have been feeling the same way this morning. So yeah. guys, tell me, what do you think are the two things? Mm -hmm. Even if you just want to give us one, give us one. Yeah. One thing. What ideas do you have about foundational factors, critical factors mm -hmm. that make your healing last, permanent, super long lasting? Let us know. Lisa said, I had so many bizarre dreams and so much fear releasing, gross and interesting all at the same time. Oh, Daisy can speak to that one, man. Of course. <laughs> I, I had weird dreams too last night and I haven't been having a lot of dreams lately. So yeah, there's definitely something going on because I don't know, something with the energy that you were just talking about for sure. Yeah. And I'm glad you said it that way too. Cause like, I think so many of us are we want to know why, like, well, what's going on with the energy and, and yes, you can look right. up what's going on and all this stuff and get information, but it's also okay to not know. It's also just to be like, all right, something's going on with the energy. I don't know what it is, but I also know that this is a time for me to take really, really good care of myself and nourish myself and rest. And, and Barbara said she had to go to the hospital yesterday for emergency migraine treatment. Wow. I'm telling you, my friends, this oh. is it's not just you. Okay. Yeah. This is yeah. you are definitely responding to some collective energy right now. So definitely. All right. So you guys are being shy. Oh no, there's Lisa. Love <laughs> Proud of you. You're even recovering from your full body migraine and you answered. So she said, I feel like belief or trust could be one. All right. So mm -hmm. trust is, is a component of one of these. Yeah. So yes, yes, yes. Good job. Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. I've been connecting to the energy for jube jubes. What is jube jubes? <laughs> and keep feeling my grandfather. Oh, he has passed. Okay. And feeling my grandfather as he enjoys those candies. Oh, the jube jube. Oh, candies. got okay. it. You're educating us, Robin. I've never heard of those candies. <laughs> All right. I'm wondering what you were just saying, alluding to the grid. Is some of this related to leaving the matrix, says Danielle. Self love, says Marla. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, that is a component of one piece of these, of the, of these, this, these, yes. I said it weird. She says, all right. So, um, should we tell them or should we tease them? We could tell them. Okay. So, <laughs> Robin said it's a Canadian thing. Sorry. I'm following the comments at the same time. Um, so the two primary foundational factors for your healing to last one, I'm going to tease them with the first one is pace. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is giving yourself integration time. It's being patient enough to allow yourself to heal in the way and, and at the pace that your body and your energy field are meant to. Yep. This is something that both Daisy and I have heard, have, have experienced and learned yeah. so much, both with our physical health and our emotional health and just our general energetic health and spiritual health, all of it, yeah. every layer that you can imagine, right? It all needs its own time and it will unfold in its own time. And if you push the pace too far, you're going to be a hot mess and it's not going to okay. work. And then you're going to think, oh, well, this modality doesn't work or this doesn't work. And you're going mm -hmm. to feel possibly even worse and frustrated. Yeah, totally. Totally. Because, well, also because I think it just, it brings up all the stuff that you're trying to heal. 
And then it, it makes you like stay in there too, you know, because you're basically trying to heal this stuff. But then if you're going too fast, you're, you're kind of still in this almost like tornado effect with your stuff that you're trying to heal and feeling like it's not, I just need to get rid of it. Like I need to get rid of it. And it just, it doesn't work like that. As much as it'd be great if we could just, you know, press a button and it's gone, you know, it just, it just doesn't work that way. And it's a bigger part is just leaning into accepting that, you know, and knowing that each part of that process as painful as some of it can be, it all has value, so much value that, that we are missing out on if, if we try to just jump right to the point, you know, get right to the healing. It, it, it's not going to give you long lasting results. It just won't be, because especially if we do, it's just like the band-aid kind of thing where we just want to rip it off and we're good. Mm-hmm. But usually that means that we've missed a lot of stuff. But sometimes that can even happen. I think where, um, where we're, we're not aware that we're even doing that. I think right. that's a big thing too. Cause sometimes we are, but so, a lot of the times actually, I think we're often, we're not aware and we're like, Oh no, I'm doing great. Like I'm healing, I'm getting this out of the way. Like I'm really doing the work. And, and cause I've, I know I've done this many times myself in the past, you know, and I was like, Oh yeah, like I got this, this is great. And then all of a sudden, you know, something comes up and I'm like, Whoa, you know, what, what is that? Like, where did that come from? And I thought I was done with that. Or I thought, you know, and realizing (laughs) obviously there was a lot more work to be done and a lot more depth that I needed to go into that I I wasn't doing, you know, because, because it's painful and it's hard and it takes work. That's the thing. I think people realize it's like, I know it sucks, but you have to like do the work, you know? Yeah. I see. And I love it. I so love that, that visual that you created of like, you're, you're stirring things up in your field. Like if you've decided to heal and you've started that journey, even if it's just going to the doctor or, you know, or going to therapy consistently, like it doesn't even have to be like natural healing or spiritual healing, energetic healing, but you started that process. You're starting to, to stir that stuff up. And I love that visual of like, all right, now it's all stir, stir, oh my goodness, stirred up and it's hanging out in my field. Right. But, but I'm kind of half-assed healing because I kind of don't fully, like, I kind of want to do it, but I kind of don't fully want to do it because I'm kind of nervous about, or, or this is uncomfortable. And so you stir it all up, but then you're like a shit show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're confused. And then you're, again, you're half-assed healing. You're not fully putting it in. And so you're only scratching, you know, certain layers. And, Mm -hmm. and the other thing you were talking about that made me think was like, it's also, you were talking about, yeah, you'd be so proud of yourself because you're like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm healing all the things and it feels so good and blah, blah. I've told, oh my gosh, I've been there so much. I think one of us can probably admit to that. Raise your hand if you can, because like admitting that is the first step of that awareness, right? And, and And communicating to the universe that you're ready to shift it. Because when you talk about that, it's like, yeah, so consciously your ego is really satisfied with the healing you're doing. Right. And the yep. healing path you're doing and the tactics that you're taking and the tools you're implementing, right? Oh, I'm so proud of myself, blah, 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 blah. Great. But guess what? Then you're tied into your ego's agenda of what you're, and the outcome, like yeah. what it's supposed to look like and how things are yep. supposed to go in order for you to be healing. And that's, what's so important about this pace thing. We don't decide the freaking pace. Mm-hmm. Oh no, not at all. It is happens with or without us. Like we do not decide that. Another thing that I just thought of too, when you're talking about that, just is also realize another thing to realize too, is like, sometimes are we doing this for other people too? Are we trying to look like we got it together and we're doing this for other people? Because also this is just bringing up a lot of things for me because it's, I'm just thinking a lot about like sobriety for me. Cause for me, that was such a beautiful lesson. That was a very difficult one. It took a long time. But, you know, for me, it was, I, that happened to me so many times where I was like, I'm really doing this. I'm doing the work. I am getting this all together. And then I'd relapse and I'd be like, whoa, you know what? I thought I was doing all the right things, you know, but I had to relapse so many times to actually get it through my head that no, you know, I, I was skipping things. I was trying to do it my way. I was trying to avoid pain, you know, and I was also trying to please other people. I was trying to make people look like I was doing the work. I was going to be sober. I was going to do good, you know, and that that's not going to get you anywhere. 
It's just not. Mm -hmm. And I think also accepting that, you know, this process is messy and people may not understand that, but again, that's better if, if you just, just let it be that way. Because the more you're trying to put it in this pretty package or whatever, you know, that that's also just going to prevent you from really experiencing that healing. Yeah. You know what? I love that you said that because that was one of my favorite quotes when I first started this healing, well, maybe, maybe like a year and a half into this healing journey, mm -hmm. which was like, I saw this quote by Theo Cummings. He's a coach and it was take messy action with a light heart. Mm -hmm. And I love that so much because there's so much like we get so serious about our, yeah. healing, you know, like we get so serious yeah. about it. And it's like, you know, healing is truly a big piece of healing is experimentation and like trying shit on for size. So it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're experimenting with your body, your emotions, whatever you're, you're learning about yourself in that way, which is like, okay, like what are the things that help me in this area? And okay, well that didn't work. So no big deal. Instead of what I would do is I would desperately attach to whatever it is I was getting in terms of feedback from the doctors or from the, um, you know, naturopaths or healers or whatever that I would desperately attach to, okay, this is what's going to help me. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I put all my faith in that. Yeah. And instead it's looking at any feedback that comes from outside of you and being like, oh, that's intriguing. Let me see how that aligns with who yeah. I am and how I operate and my energy. And then let's test it out. It's like this, every single healing strategy, even anything you learn from this show from today or going forward in this series, it's being able to identify like, okay, you know, how does this work with my energy? Let me experiment with it. Each tool is a hypothesis. Each tool is, is a hypothesis for you to test out. And then you get to see rather than like, this is my answer, right? And like deciding that's your answer and then getting disappointed because it doesn't work that way ever. No, exactly. No, and that makes me even think about like, I just love, like one of the things just with AA for me too, is that they, often you'll hear people say like, these are all suggestions. That's a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're not telling you that that's the way you have to do it, right? It's just what's worked for other people. And I love that because again, it's just like, like they have a system, you know, and it works, but again, they very much kind of try to show you that it can be your own way and it should be. Yes. But that's, that's where you get the most effective results. Not when you're following them. Yeah. You're right. It is meant to be your own way. And when right. it's meant to be your own way, your way is again, not decided by you. Right. It's decided by spirit. It's despite decided by your ancestors, by yeah. your past lives, by like, what you are meant to experience, you know, going forward in this lifetime to be able to learn your lesson. So that brings us to the second thing. So everybody write down, what was the first thing? What was the first primary foundational factor for securing your healing long lasting? And somebody wrote patience. I think it was Robin mm. and a hundred percent that's yeah. So, so impatience is what comes up when we are not following or when we're having trouble following the pace yeah. that our soul wants to follow to heal or mm -hmm. that our body wants to follow to heal right and we're going to feel that impatience we're going to feel that rub in a way that's a good thing because it's like oh good I'm actually moving forward at a pace that I'm not dictating this yeah. is not on my terms so that's actually a good thing because then it makes me realize that like okay I'm actually putting myself outside of my comfort zone a little bit and I'm allowing this to flow in the way that it's meant to right, right. totally um and Kira says take what resonates with your presence and let it be yes mm, so young so that brings us beautifully to the primary foundational factor number two to secure your healing long term so Lisa got the closest when she was talking about trust and Marla was pretty close too when she was talking about self-love. Mm -hmm. So these are both incorporated into the second foundational factor, which is intimacy. Yeah. Okay. So intimacy, I cannot stress this enough. It gives me chills all over my body. This is intimacy with Every single layer of your being, every single layer of your being. And when you find intimacy with every single layer of your being and love the fricking process 
of getting intimate with every single layer of your being. That's going to create intimacy in other areas of your life with your relationships and otherwise when you're, if you're thinking about intimacy in that way. But I can't stress how important this is. I think this is even more important than pace because pace is, yeah, I mean, pace is something that it's almost like, okay, the intimacy is like the most foundational and then you need to integrate those lessons and that work you're doing on the intimacy, give yourself space and time to be able to allow that to settle before you go get, go to the next level of intimacy. So they work together, but intimacy is more foundational even than pace. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And I think for me, especially just in my healing, um, I was completely dis- like dissociated from myself due to a lot of different things, but having an intimate connection with who I really was as a person, I had, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just completely, just completely detached, you know, and a big part of that too, for me was like codependency, different things like this, you know, so kind of uh, having an identity based on other people and all of that. Um, and yeah, you know, there was no way for me to heal until I allowed that inner self to really speak to me and, and show me who I was. And, you know, part of that has, that, there's a lot of factors to that. I mean, for me, I had to cut a lot of people out of my life actually to hear that person, to see that person. Cause there were some relationships where I wasn't allowing that person to be seen. So how was I even going to see them? Right. Um, so I think for me, it was also being in an environment with not just myself, but with people that I felt comfortable bringing that person out and, and actually going through the process of learning who that person was too, which was really beautiful. I mean, I think that was one of the most amazing gifts I ever received, uh, doing sobriety, my journey through sobriety and everything else that I ended up doing and healing, but it was, it was getting to actually know who I was and and loving that and being very solid in that, which I had never really experienced completely before. And yeah. And the word completely there. Exactly. Because you know, I've been in in and out of therapy my whole life since I was seven. Um, and well, until about five years ago (laughs) when I was like, Oh, that's only one layer. Like, because it's true. Like I was attending to myself. I'm very self-aware. I'm very introspective. I'm very in tune with myself and my body, Yeah. but I am, I'm still, and will continue to learn deeper, deeper levels of who I am and how I tick and what I'm meant for and all of these things. It's just going to continue to expand because when you're working with spiritual energy, when you're working with energy at all, it's infinite and it's always regenerating and it's always reforming and creating and, you know, and so it's this opportunity when you work with this for infinite possibility of exploring yourself at, you're never going to get to the full depth and completeness of understanding necessarily in this lifetime. I mean, you may, but we're never going to fully know that until we're in, just in spiritual form oh, you know yeah. what I mean? and, and know what we're capable of and be able to look down in this vantage point, right. Of like oh, yeah. these, right. You know, these little ants on this planet and be able to realize like, you know, the, the purpose of all of this. Mm-hmm. And um, even- I love, I love that idea. Like you were talking about with it is important to be held intimately in an environment like you were talking about with sobriety Mm -hmm. or like for me, it was my individual therapist, you know, off and on Um, because we do need to feel safe. Yeah. We're opening up all of these layers. We, we, we need to feel safe because our human is going to resist it to a level of, I don't feel like I can do this either with your health or with your emotional health. Like, I don't even feel like I can tolerate this because you're not feeling safe enough to open up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're not used to maybe people being a safe space for that either. Mm-hmm. Cause I think for me, that was a big one. Like I had had so many relationships that were, you know, abusive or just like not healthy where like, whenever I, I had this pattern where I started, you know, whenever I opened up about how I was truly feeling or, you know, what was going on, I would be shut down. Right. And so that created this idea like, oh, it's not safe to, to really express that. Or, you know, you got to be careful what you really say or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's very common for, I think, so many people, you know, they've had at least one experience, right. Where they feel that when they were trying to really be transparent, it was not received well. Um, So, you know, being in an environment where you can be transparent and that doesn't happen. is such a big part of the process of kind of healing that past trauma as well yeah Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think you keep saying these words that perfectly lead into. Um, so you <laughs> use the word you use the word trauma, and that's like I was just going to talk about you know how do we how do we gain intimacy at every single layer, right? That that's the second foundational factor. Right. The first one was pace. The second one was intimacy, right? So how do we do that at every single layer? Well, our, we don't. We also don't decide. Just like we don't decide our pace, we also don't decide what feels traumatic to our nervous system mm -hmm. and what doesn't. Oh so yeah. I could get stung by a bee and have an enormous traumatic response, whereas Daisy could get stung by a bee and be like, "Ah, oh, no big deal." Right. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. you could say, "Well, Laura's a wuss, and that's why," right? <laughs> um, but I have no idea all of the components that contribute to why my nervous system reacts to certain stimuli in different ways. I learned that over the course of this human experience, right? And I can gain right. more information on it, but trauma gets held within every single layer when we're talking about intimacy. So healing trauma in whatever form that it's showing up for you is a perfect example of how we can start to peel away these layers, you know, because trauma is held within, it is stored within the physical body. Oh yeah. So memory gets stored and that memory of the event, whatever it happens to be, is then connected to and housed with the emotion that you were feeling at the time of the event. Mm -hmm. And so it's being able to clear and heal and understand and become intimately connected to and knowledgeable about the physiological process that exists within your body surrounding that memory or event then you're also going to deal with the emotional level then you're also going to deal with the beliefs that were distorted by that event and shifting those then you're going to deal with the energy that follows this that might have come from way before this lifetime and that's okay. why it affected you so much you know what i mean oh yeah so, so it's healing at all of those layers so can you share a little bit daisy too about like what are the layers that that you and i have both worked through and that are really necessary to, to, to gain this intimacy in. Yeah. Well, so, you know, and, and that's why I love energy work because I mean, for me, when I started out with my healing, a lot of it was, I mean, there definitely was a spiritual aspect to it, but a lot of it was more just emotional. Uh, and, and that was it. And it was great. And, you know, and I, I gained a lot from that, but when I went into energy work, it just, it took all of that to just such a much deeper and more effective level. And I, it also, like, I just was realizing all this stuff that was still there that I didn't even like know, mm -hmm. but you know, it can be a lot of things. I mean, a lot of it is also like past lives is a huge one. Mm -hmm. It's a huge one. And, you know, I think it's super complex. And I always, am a big person in saying that we like, we don't know all, we don't know it all. We don't understand the whole thing. We can't, there's no way. I don't think we're meant to, Yeah. but I can definitely say that there is an impact. There is an impact with past lives. It, it's part of who we are. And that's also really connected also just to our higher self too, because to me, that's past lives are all connected to like your main soul. That's, that's the way I view it. Right. So it's really healing those kind of tendrils that come off of that all at the base, right? And then really connecting deeply with that core soul. Uh, also, this is ancestral healing too, which is honestly tied a lot to past lives in a way. Yeah. It's similar in a lot of ways, which is like our DNA mm -hmm. and genetics, just all of that. Cause also like, I mean, that's even, even that's scientific. Mm -hmm. Even with like epigenetics, the things that trauma and things that have happened to your ancestors, it is encoded in your DNA. That, that is a real fact. Yeah. Um, so there's that, I mean, and there's womb healing, inner child work. I mean, there's, there's so many different things mm -hmm. and I could go on and on about it. Right. But those are just some of the main ones that I would definitely bring up. Yeah. And it's reflective of the root cause. Like Daisy yeah. was talking about past lives. I personally feel that past lives, past life work is the deepest level of, of oh, yeah. Of yeah. That we can do. And, um, and that's why I don't encourage people to do it too often because yeah you again we talk about pace like that's something that yep. needs significant integration time um but we talk about root cause and we talk about that with with you know any of us who are not just going to a tra traditional medical doctor to get a pill to make us feel better right like when we're thinking about 
okay, great. Thank you for assisting me with comfort so that the symptom is relieved. Yeah. Where did this come from? What is the root cause of this? Right. Mm -hmm. And when we find that out in our physical bodies, we're able to relieve a lot of our symptoms. Yeah. And so the same thing goes when we're looking at wholeness, which is hysterical because I put on this necklace this morning that Daisy made me. And this is um, seraphonite, right, Daisy? I had forgotten what the crystal was. And I was like, tell me which one this is again. And it was just so funny because I was just drawn to pull it on. And she said, well, that, that one's about wholeness and balance and the angel angelic realm. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> amazing because that's exactly what we're talking about today, right? It's like returning to that state of wholeness. And I say returning to it because we've been whole before, you know? And so it's not like you're, you're creating something that's never existed. I always told that to my therapy clients, like, when was the last time that you did feel really amazing and phenomenal? It could have been when you were three, but if it existed, then guess what? You have a template of success to work from. It's just gathering data and information from that time. And so what we're doing is we're taking it even deeper than the physical body, right? It's not just the intimacy with your physical body and resolving on that level in terms of root cause. It's going even deeper to, to microscopic and even tinier energetic levels to oh, be able yeah. to deal with the root cause. Go ahead. Yeah, no. And, and the other thing I just want to say too, is like, I, I love the, how you're talking about going back to the state of like equilibrium and, and wholeness. Yeah. And the other thing that I, I just, I don't know. And I feel like spirits just like, saying this, but like, yeah. again, I also feel that the, our core soul, right. That is our state of perfection. That is our mm. state of wholeness and equilibrium. And it's always there. It's always been there. It always exists there. And really it's just the, the, you know, the pieces that come off of it, the lies, that's where we'll forget or we'll get distracted by the different lessons, but it's all part of it because all those lessons also go back up to that to make it more whole, more understanding, right? Yes. That's yeah. why I love working within the Akashic records too, because as we access this space and we bring forward the lessons and we, we, like you guys are typing here, you're acknowledging it out loud, right? You're, you're communicating it. Okay. Yeah. As you're doing that, you're writing into your consciousness, you're shifting your consciousness, you're writing into your Akashic record, which I always talk about. If you guys know me at all, and have been used to what I talk about over and over again, <laughs> I love talking about loving yourself forward. And that's a beautiful way to love yourself forward, to know that as you're writing into your Akashic records and you're shifting your consciousness, you're making the future version of you is so much more easeful and so much more natural and blissful. It's such a gift to yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The more you're able to connect to that core self, yes, you just find so much more ease and grace mm -hmm. just overall because you're, you're able to tap into that. Because that's the thing, the more you practice that, it just becomes very easy and natural and effortless for you to check in with that self. Yeah. yeah. Oh then, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. And it pulls it more down to earth too, to more like in you, right? Yes. And just, you like, I said, from it. just like I said this morning, like I'm so proud of who I am today and I used to, you know, wake up with a migraine like that or a partial migraine and be like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like moan my way through the day, yeah. like yeah. a couple hours. I, do that. I know. <laughs> and then I'd finally be like, all right, it's bad enough. I'm going to take this medication or whatever. Or I would just wake up and be like, all right, I'm popping it, you know, to prevent it, which is also self-loving by the way. Um, but um, the fact that it's exactly what Daisy just said. It's not like you guys, if you haven't been doing this work, are going to be able to wake up and just say, okay, I'm going to meditate and it's going to go away. Right. You know? and, and at the beginning, that's what I would do. And then I'd be like, well, why the hell doesn't like people would say this would just go away and it's not going away. It's because the more consistently that you do it, yeah. and you cultivate this relationship, you can snap right into it. You can snap right to it. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it is about that commitment, you know, and that's why getting to know yourself, like having that intimacy and really enjoying and loving the process of getting to know yourself at all of those layers, you're then going to be much more likely to prioritize your healing. You know, I can't tell you the number of people that are like, 
yeah, I just, I haven't really been connecting to spirit lately and I haven't been, and I fall into that too. Yeah. You know, I'm a human being, you know, I haven't, I mean, I shouldn't say I do much lately because honestly, spirit just comes to me if I don't. Exactly, right. Anymore. I don't anymore. Kind of despite myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like through the healing process, that yeah. is part of the journey where you're kind of ebbing and flowing. You'll have those couple of weeks where you're like, ah, I didn't really do it or whatever. Yeah. And so what do you have to tune into? You have to tune into that intimacy with yourself. You have to be like, all right, where do I need to get my, to know myself more deeply so that I can really feel into this and understand the next steps I need to take, yeah. um, to be able to, to reverse this pattern or erase the pattern or whatever. So, um, all right. So pace and intimacy, do you guys have any questions about that? Those are, are the two primary foundational factors that will help you heal long term they will make this half-assed healing you've been doing not half-assed so if you are feeling really impatient with this process you got to work on patience yeah. yeah if you're feeling like you don't have like you think about learning about the intimacy of your physiological processes and you're like Ugh, that sounds miserable <laughs> you need to do it you're you have resistance around getting to a deep level of intimacy with yourself. Hi, Sherry. Happy Saturday. I love you. Um, you know, so, so that's the, that's what I would suggest in terms of where you put your energy, yeah. but I want to take this moment now for Daisy to pull a card because she was drawn, yeah. you jumped on to pull a card for you guys. So this will be good wisdom um, on the heels of this conversation for you mm -hmm. to uniquely take with you to implement today. Yeah. Oh, I love that key wrap. I can make a difference and will dare to be different. Yes. Hmm. Go outside of your comfort zone. So yeah, so that's one of the questions here while Daisy's pulling a card is like, how do you construct a template for yourself? Yeah. Right. That's that's unique to you, to your energy, to your soul's path. So that as these things come up in your life, which they will, my friends, they will. Um you have this template to refer to at every single layer. So I'm just posing that question and go ahead, read the card. All right. So we got a that. starfish, <gasps> which I love. I think that's so cute. And then let's see. But I also, I wanted to pick two, I think, but let's see here. Okay. Did I ever find it? I love that. Which deck is this? So people this know. This is the uh, animal spirit deck. Okay. which I love. Come on, Daisy. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. All right. Beautiful, alluring, superficial, or shallow. Hmm. Mm. The starfish is a natural and exquisite beauty, mesmerizing to all. Being around someone with starfish energy is a thrill, like you've been put under a spell of divinity itself. The problem is these creatures have been reliant on how they look and what other people think of them for so long that they may have forgotten their deeper callings. When this card appears, it's important to ask, am I being swayed by outward appearances? What dreams have I put aside to please others? Mm -hmm. ah. Wow, <laughs> there you that's go. What I'm I mean. talking about. And it, oh my gosh, let me read you my You Are a Badass calendar for today. Yeah. It says exactly that. The more in tune and in love you are with your awesome self, the less crap you will give about what any non-fans of yours think and the easier it will be to strut your strut, find your joy and get it on. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Th th there's an element of this. If you're watching this live or on the replay, there's an element of this. You're not going deeply enough. Mm -hmm. You of are course. going deeply enough. Even if you think consciously, I'm going so deep because there's been so many times I'm like, holy shit, that was deep. Oh my yeah. God. And then a new layer's uncovered and I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, it goes further. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it can always go further, oh, like oh, forever oh, and ever. It just goes on and on and on. I mean, and that's, but that's the beautiful thing about it. And I mean, that's what we were already saying before is just that, again, realizing that there's no destination here, right? It's just the journey of your soul. And I was going to say also, I think earlier too, is just like, even when we do pass on and we're in spirit, we're still learning. We're still like, we do, obviously we, we're in a different form. We're in a different perspective, but I think it's like, it's just the infinite kind of process of a soul, right? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. 
Mm -hmm. Sherry was just the ocean. She said, Lisa said, this is exactly accurate for her life. And Sherry says bottomless. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I just yeah. to one Infinite more. possibility. I know you want to pull one more, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have a ridiculously fun surprise for you. <laughs> Sherry. I'm so excited. Ha. <laughs> okay. Oh, where's my book? Oh, here it is. So we got trust your path. Mm. Let me look at that picture one more second. Hold that up again. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I do too. I know. And then let me use the index here. Okay. Oh, work your light is impossible to find. Yeah, I know. <laughs> here we go. Found it. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? <sighs> ah, the universe is conspiring. Keep facing your true north. Your job is not to pave the path, but to simply keep facing your true north and take one step after another. If you do this, you can't go wrong. The universe is conspiring. Don't waver or doubt. Use your heart as a compass and put one foot in front of the other. If you follow the invisible trail of what lights you up, you will light up the world without even trying. Most people don't follow the highest call of their soul because they are waiting to see the end destination before they take the first step. If you take one baby step each day, within a year, you will have taken 365 steps in your dedicated direction. If you want to write a book, write a page every day. If you want to ch change careers, do one thing every day in dedication to that. Before you know it, in just a year from now, you will turn back and look in awe at how far you have journeyed. Keep moving, moving and open yourself up to a whole new level of support and receiving. Things are not going to work out the way you were planning, but if you had a little faith and kept showing up, they will work out even better than you could possibly imagine. Don't micromanage the universe. Trust your path and let your soul lead the way. There you go. <laughs> that isn't confirmation for everything I know. talking about today. Perfect. Wow. I love that. That's so yummy. Mm -hmm. So what lights you up guys coming from that card, you know, thinking yeah. about taking that step a day and then you'll have 365 steps by the end of the year. Um, and that's what I do consistently. Like if I feel down on myself one day, or I'm just kind of like questioning or doubting, which rarely happens mm -hmm. when I am connected to the Akash. Well, it doesn't happen when I'm connected to the Akash, but when I, you know, when I'm, when I'm not deliberately and intentionally there, it can yeah. show up every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And that's really the opportunity there for me to look back and say, all right, where was I a year ago? Yeah. And then I'm like, holy crap. Like when yeah. I look at that, I, I am, oh my gosh, I am wildly different. I tell my husband all the time. I'm sorry that you married somebody who's like completely opposite. Right. Now. Yeah. I was so different than who I was. I was like the type A perfectionistic, success driven, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm like, whatever. I <laughs> oh, Sherry wants to know if you can post that card reading, Daisy. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. You got it. Yay. So, yeah, um, so yeah talking about it. like intimacy with your path and like being held said something about that like allowing yourself to feel safe or comforted or held yeah, you're doing right. trust yeah that trust it's like so, it yeah. was literally both things in the car I know. and then you had just said about you know yeah. don't focus on the destination right and i know <laughs> so all right so do you guys give us an emoji if you want to hear our the special surprise that we're going to be sharing with you today it's so fun yay i'm excited if there's always a 20 to 30 second lag on Facebook. I know. So. <laughs> I'll take these cards out so I remember. For those of you who jumped on late, don't forget to either tag people or share this out for mm -hmm. anybody who needs additional tips and tricks for healing at a really deep level. Okay, we got one from Sherry. Nobody else wants to know. <laughs> we'll do, do it for Sherry. <laughs> wants to know. All right, so we'll just jump on a private call with Sherry and Kira. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys, so what we are going to share with you is, oh, Lisa, she gave us an ear. All right, there we go. Um, so what we are going to share with you today is we are going to share the specifics of our entire itinerary 
for, of our retreat. We're going to tell you the entire itiner itinerary, which is so funny because it's like something that we initially kept private, like all the detail. Yeah. And then it was, it just, for both of us kept coming forward that like, we need to share it. We just need to share the exact itinerary for, for this retreat. Like every, it's funny. Okay. So every time we meet to, you know, plan out details and things yeah. like that, we get more and more, not just excited, but like really honestly nourished and like yeah sinking into the vibe of like oh my gosh this is it gets better and better or or oh, yeah. like the energy just keeps shifting and we're just like oh my gosh this just keeps getting better and better and we just are we're just excited and we want to share it all with you yeah I know. because when we talk about and this is this is also where the the concepts this dropped in from the akash one night the concepts of pace and intimacy mm -hmm. came forward it was after our call because yes. we had this call and what we said was i love this so much because we've opened so much space for there to for this to be at literally the perfect pace that she and i have both identified in our own healing journeys at the perfect pace, at every single layer, inviting intimacy at every single layer of your being, creating an intimacy as a community in this retreat to be able to have people feel safe so that they can get to a long lasting, because we don't want this to just be, okay, this was fun and I love this, this is a great experience. And don't get me wrong, it's still worth it, you know, if you were like, yeah, sure. like, it's a great experience. Just like if you took a vacation, right? Yeah, totally. It's also something we really want you to like sink into your being and carry forward with you forever. Forever, lifelong. Lifelong impact lifelong. is our goal for you. you know? Yes. That's what the outcome is. Correct. We don't want it to just be like a nice spa trip. I mean, we want it to be really like, whoa, when you get back, be like, I am not the same person now. Yes. It's the best way possible. You know, I know I'm not going to be. No, like, <laughs> no I can already feel it. Like even with some of the yeah. things that we were talking about, I said, so Daisy was brainstorming. She's so creative. And we were talking about one of the workshops that we were doing and yeah. she was brainstorming about something we were creating tangibly for people. And I was like, yeah. oh gosh, I want that now. Like, yeah. now. like, I'm just, I'm so excited. Like Daisy and I both, are planning to fully immerse ourselves into this just just like everybody that's there. Like we yeah. create, we created this for our own healing and our mm -hmm. own needs in addition to whatever because it's a reflection of those people who are coming to us that need yeah. the same. Yeah. You oh, know? Yeah. Right. And it's um, that connection that, that amplifies all of it. You know, oh, the fact that yes. we all are doing it for each other too. It's so much better than just someone like kind of dictating, like, do this to feel better. You know, it's like no. we're really like uniting i mean it's a it's about really coming together as a yeah. as a collective it is and i was talking to one of my clients the other day and we were talking about the retreat and then we'll tell you the itinerary i promise but <laughs> um we were talking about the retreat and she's somebody who also has some issues with eating and some issues with like her sleep and yeah. like her day to day routine and kind of holding herself accountable, just kind of like getting through the day in a way that's more gracious and loving to herself mm -hmm. and not so harsh. And like somebody like that, who would benefit so deeply yeah. from four full days, you know, with a 20 year therapist, a medium and healer, a healer to, we are going to be with you for every meal for going to bed at night, for waking up in the morning, like any of those transitions that you struggle with on the day to day and being able to guide you uniquely through that yeah. and extract lessons and understanding and greater intimacy of yourself at whatever layer mm -hmm. through that, right? right. And, and, and listen, there's virtual tickets available for this retreat too, um, which, are, which are amazing. I mean, yeah. it, beautiful because you're going to get every single workshop and then a 90 minute live Q and a with us, if you're not able to make it there in person. So you're still going to be able to access that magic. Mm -hmm. Um, but being in person too, carries it, carries a, a, a more impactful vibe for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, like I, I always say, you know, cause this is such a thing with just even doing readings for people. And I always say like virtual really does not impact like the effectiveness of work like that, but 
there is just something about being in person that you can't replace necessarily. It's just this, it's really the energy being able to really feel the energy. And yes. The energy. Yeah. That's, that's the one thing. Cause you can feel energy being built online for sure. But when you're all in the same room together, it's just, it's just different. And it's, it's you're so, so right. Yeah. You're so right. Because even, you know, a perfect example here is like, so I've had crystals for years. And then when Daisy brought over her crystal lot boxes and boxes <laughs> and we were, we were connecting with them and stuff. And oh my gosh, like the energy palpably holding them and comparing how they feel differently within my hand. And, you know, like it's so different. Like you can, you can, some people will say like, I don't know, I can't really feel it necessarily yeah. yet. First of all, that will come in time, whether you're doing this virtually mm-hmm. or not, but again, pace <laughs> and be patient mm-hmm. with yourself. But the other piece is, um, oh, see, I just lost my thought. What was I saying, Daisy? Um, <laughs> we both have brain fog problems. We do. Oh my gosh. Well, the rain this morning and all this shoe on it, are you kidding me? I know. Um, oh no, but the tangible stuff is what I was talking about. And, oh, but like in person, like, um, Marla, my girlfriend who was, who was on here a little while ago, she is, um, she does, she's a shamanic Reiki practitioner. And so when she like has her hands on my head and like, she's moving Mm -hmm. it across my body, like just that I can physically feel like you can palpably feel it more tangibly, you know what I mean? Um, all right, I'll shut up now. Let's do, let's. (laughs) Tell everybody what our itinerary okay. is. Okay, so uh, day one is Friday, October eighth, mm-hmm. which is actually my dad's birthday, and oh. he—I know—and he passed seven years ago. So it feels like, and we're still going to be like right on the heels of new moon energy too, yeah. which is the time for reset, the time for a fresh start, and like a new you and a new beginning. Mm. So I love that. So check-in is going to be from one to three. We have this absolutely gigantic mansion in the middle of the Pocono mountains. Cause Daisy and I are both so in love with the mountains yeah. and, um, being connected to mother earth, you know? And so, yeah. so we are going to be checking in from one to three, just chilling out, hanging out snacks and stuff. And then three o'clock is going to be our opening ceremony. So we're going to be setting intentions, but this is what we're going to be doing a um, cacao ceremony with our ancestors, because we really want to create that foundation of like, you know, this context from where you came and being able to really purify your system and offer you a connection and some familiarity to be able to feel really, I keep saying the word held, but that's the word that keeps coming up, like really held and rooted as you move forward in the rest of the experience. Um, We also put this very specifically and intentionally in an order that is not going to break the human, right? A pace, but also an order that it isn't too much intensity at once. Both of us need time to reset our energy and to integrate. And it's, so we've incorporated this concept of pace and intimacy into every layer of this. Yeah, giving time for rest and integration, reflection time, time to take time for yourself as well, to just reflect and journal and just feel into the healing so that we're all going at a pace where we don't feel like, oh, this is going way too fast and I'm not understanding all the lessons that are coming up. We're giving you all ample time to really deeply understand what's coming forward as we do each workshop. Yeah. And like not having to be with humans all the time, like yeah. sometimes you, you're going to need private time and, yeah. and we're going to encourage it, you know, because sitting with yourself, sitting with yourself is where you're going to get more answers than anything. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was something else I was going to say about that. I feel before we go into the next thing, I don't know. It'll come up if it was important. So yeah. Happy Saturday. All right. So the next one, you want you can do the next one, Daisy. You let me say I have to pull up my note. <laughs> oh, I'll do it then. Okay. Pull it up. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna actually be. I have these sacred river rocks that are like, oh my gosh, they're big and they're smooth and they're oh my gosh, they're wonderful. And so we're going to be infusing these with en- energy and painting them. Um, so we're going to be, this is like a very mindful activity, very hands-on, very creative because, um, we're going to be doing an activity with this 
minutes later on, which I don't think we, I, do we want to tell them that activity? I don't think I want to tell them that activity. No, let's save that. I, yeah, I want that to be a surprise. We're going to be doing an activity with them, like either the next day or the day after. Um, mm -hmm. That's just really freaking fun and like intimate with connecting the community. So I'm really freaking excited. I think I kind of want to keep that a surprise. Yes, I do too. Yeah. And then we're going to have dinner and um, we have a fabulous, fabulous chef who's going to be joining us yes. for, for this retreat and cooking. Um, we're going to be, we'll have a menu for you guys too, when you mm -hmm. sign up that you can look at so that you're really prepared and present with, or, you know, able to prepare if you need to. Um, you're also able to tell us any food allergies or intolerances you have so we can work around that. But we're going to incorporate ritual into every meal and clearing our food and preparing our bodies to receive this gift and this nourishment from the universe. So um, I'm really excited about mealtimes, to be honest. Shocker. I usually am. But um, just for like the ritualistic piece of it. And don't worry, there'll be lots of snacks so you can snack in between. Then we're just going to like chill for a little bit. You'll have some free time. And then every single night, we're going to have a fire pit outside yeah. where you're going to be led in a meditation and singing and chanting and just storytelling and just connection time, because I truly can't live without the element of fire. And it provides a level of intimacy with my own soul that I can't even describe. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do that every night. Oh, chocolate chip cookies. I'll bring them, Sherry. I can't live without them. So, you know, they're going to be there because I can't survive without chocolate chip cookies. Mine will be gluten-free, but I'll bring some ones that are not gluten-free for you, Sherry. <laughs> All right. You want to go to, to Saturday, the 9th, Daisy? So I can't find my note. Oh, I'll do it then. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, don't worry about it. I don't mind. I just, if you can just um, jump in anytime so yeah. that you don't feel like I'm taking over this live. Um, <laughs> So then in the morning, FYI, we're not starting any morning before 10 a.m. Yeah. Workshops yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we want you to really take that quiet time with yourself in the morning. Obviously, there's going to be breakfast available. We can do breakfast together. You can do it on your own. You can go out. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of grounds. There's a pond nearby. There's hiking trails. We're going to be going on a hike one day. But don't worry, it's going to be super low key because God knows Daisy and I would probably pass out if we didn't. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's really to connect with Mother Nature, and we're going to be making this gorgeous um, grid, crystal, not crystal grid. It's um, mandala. mandala. Thank yeah. you. That's the word I was looking yeah, for. Earth mandala. Another we... Earth mandala. Oh, I'm so yeah. Yeah, it's gonna... we'll all make together, and we yes. can receive energy from as well. So that will be really fun. See how I totally jumped forward. That's what we're doing later that day on Saturday, because <laughs> after we have breakfast and chill out a little bit, we're going to do some Qigong, some breath work, some Tai Chi, um, to do a lot of releasing that Saturday morning. Um, and then we're going to do that special level activity with the rocks that we're not telling you about. And we're going to journal around that. And then we are going to have lots of free time to shower, have lunch, chill out, that's when we go on our hike and we ba and we go forest bathing and Daisy's going to guide us in a cord cutting while we're out there on the beautiful planet in the woods in the Pocono mountains. Yes. Um, and then we're going to travel back to the house because the hike we're going to is just a couple miles away and, um, and have some meditation time and then dinner and more fire. And then the next day, which is Sunday, the 10th, happy birthday, Marla, if you're still here, cause that's her birthday. Um, Daisy's going to lead us in a yoga class in the morning. And then we're going to have a sound bath with my gong and sound singing bowls. Yeah. And we're going to be offering some Reiki and trance healing during that time. And then we're going to, in the afternoon is going to be our, probably I would say our most intense. Yeah. I would, I would say so. experience yeah. because we're going to be doing a combination of a past life regression and a soul retrieval. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of private time after that to really integrate before we have dinner and do our fire. Um, and then the next day on Monday, you're going to have just a chill morning with a shamanic journey and a meditation circle and some womb healing to really, to really nourish you and to, to seal what we've already brought forward. Yeah. Really working with. Yeah. And then, um, and then we're going to have our closing ceremony, which is, I, I don't even have words for that. Um, so cool. Yeah. It's going to be, I'm not going to give away all the details of that. I but know, yeah, that one I want to be a surprise kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's really important to know, like, that's really going to be with some very, very intentionally 
chosen ascended masters and guides and goddesses that have come forward to us to assist you at really bringing full circle all of this healing at each layer. And um, I can't even like that one, that's one that brings me to tears just thinking about it. Like I, I'm so excited. It's gonna, that's gonna be a, such an immense intimate experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next day we're gonna be, you know, we have a, just a couple little things planned. So we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be connecting to your higher self and um, assisting you with connecting with your aura and really setting those intentions for taking everything that you've learned and healed from this space forward with you. Exactly. So, so we're tackling each of these areas of intimacy and we are available for um, assisting you through any layer of it. Meaning that again, if it's like, well, it, it's, it's difficult for me to, to eat meals this way, or it's difficult for me to get up in the morning, or if it's difficult for me to engage with humans in this way, you know, like we are there to support your human at every level, your spirit at every level, your energy at every level. And each of these workshops is taking you through that. That's why we're doing some of the creative stuff too. So we have these tangible components yeah. as well for you. Um, and, and it's on that last day on that Tuesday before you go, that we're going to be making the, the super magical concoction that Daisy has created from spirit. So um, I'm so freaking excited. Kira said, this is why I support you from a distance. Having connected to this amazing grid makes me proud being present to absorb things for my self betterment. Yes. Thank you, friend. Pack your tissues says Sherry. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's going to be tears. There's going to be, although Daisy has a pig that makes a um, snorting noise. <laughs> Maybe we, could, we could just like play every once in a while to make you laugh, but that's the thing. <laughs> like, honestly, we, we are both, I mean, we've both been through every freaking layer of healing multiple times and also know how to, number one, have this uncanny ability to shoot to right to the core of exactly what's going on with you mm -hmm. and be able to extract that and hold you as you move through it mm -hmm. and to bring fun and humor and yeah. play into this practice. Gotta lighten, it. You gotta lighten, yes. it, lighten it up a little bit. Cause yeah, cause you can't have, especially when you're doing this much work, it's just, you can't have all intensity all the time. I mean, and I say this a lot to people, just like how like humor like saved my life. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I can't imagine my life without it. it. It's what makes my day good. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's yeah. what helps me get through everything. And it's yep. so important to be able to laugh at just, even just like some of the worst stuff you gotta be able to laugh yes. at. Yes. You really do. Well, and I love it because the people who are already coming to this retreat are yeah. so good at that. <laughs> I know. They're so good at that. And they yeah. you know they're, they're every, it, it, there's an application process. I just put the link in the comments. There's a, not an application process for the virtual ticket. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the virtual link in too, which you can access from this page, but it's just easier for you to have a direct link. Yeah. Um, hold on one second. Let me find it. Talk while I find this because... Yeah, no, I mean, we'll just being able, like, and we're, we'll be able, obviously, we're going to have tears and whatever, but again, we're going to allow ourselves to just be in a space of any emotion that's coming up, right? And, yeah. and offering it also is a big part of it. Just allowing to see what's coming up naturally and honor it and let it move through. Yeah. But being able to be in a space where it's more dynamic and not just so like constrained, you know, it's, it's really just your fullest expression of yeah. however you're, you're feeling and whatever is coming up through this work. Well, that's why we call it embrace because yeah. we want to embrace you while you're doing this work. But most importantly, we want you to embrace yourself yeah. and your whole, right. right. That's the reason for this, for, for the, the reason we named it this, mm -hmm. um, because we want you to intentionally access that energy and you will, you a hundred percent will. And being in person, I mean, I can't tell you over the last 20 years, how many clients have told me, I wish I had you in my pocket. I wish I had you in my back pocket. Like, I just wish I had you with me all the time to like assist okay. with this. Now that's, that would be, this is a perfect opportunity for that. Yeah. Because again, one, you have that guidance all day, every day, but it's temporary. Because you don't want, a, you, you, as much as you want a therapist in your back pocket, you really don't because that disempowers you. Like, yeah, right. you know what I mean? Like you want to be able to figure out how to do this stuff on your own so that you're feeling like a million bucks yeah, yeah. going forward, you know? 
Right. And that's really what it's going to do. It's, it's just, it's allowing you to really let yourself again, be held by people that will fully support you through that so that you can release all that stuff that you feel vulnerable with, that you feel like you need someone 24 seven to take care of you for, you know, and then that way it's able, you're able to move through that and heal that. Then going forward, you're able to be way more empowered and just way more solid in yourself too. Well, and like we said, we organize this in a way and the depth of what we're doing and the pace of what we're doing in a way that fully secures pace and intimacy as your foundational healing tools. So that is already going to be energetically programmed within you before you leave this retreat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So what I was saying before, when I was looking for links and can't do two things at once is that, um, yeah, there's an application process for the in-person retreat because we're being very selective about who comes. The people who are already there have the absolutely the most gigantic hearts. Yeah. So much. They are wonderful. Such a great group. Oh, it's just, it's a family. Yeah. We are, we are so a family and, oh, this is the fun part too. As soon as you enroll for the in-person, you get added to our WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. So we all get to know each other and um, you can get coaching from now up until if there's anything coming up for you, you can throw any questions you want in there and we will support you all the way up until October 8th when this retreat begins, which to be honest on its own is worth over $5,000 to have both of us in this WhatsApp thread for for free coaching for Mm -hmm. um, almost two months. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, it's um, it's a, a pretty ridiculous bonus and yeah. an option for you to also just feel like you're really starting some of this work before you even get there. So yeah. that you're really connected, yeah, exactly. So um, so you can there's multiple pay- payment plans available. So you can choose mm-hmm. whichever one you want and reach out to us if you have any questions about anything that comes up as you're reading. Yeah. And the virtual ticket, that, that also has payment plans. The virtual yeah. ticket is 1,111 pay in full. And there's, I think, two payment plans for that one. You yeah. can do two payments or three payments. And for that one, you're going to receive all of your digital modules the week after we come back. So on October 19th, you're basically going to get, you're going to get our entire itinerary with links to each workshop. Yep. So you'll have all the digital workshops. And then a week after that, so you have some time to, to dive into this, on October 26th, we're going to have our live Zoom Q&A so that you can come and basically go even deeper with whatever it is you need to heal. Yeah, right? yeah. we can give you individual mm-hmm. attention. Mm-hmm. Correct. And, and yeah. more specific to you, you know, if you right. need, oh, I need this specific protocol downloaded for me or whatever, and, yeah. and we can do that for you during that call. Um, and then for the retreat, the pricing differs based on the room that you choose right. and the room that you choose is first come first serve right now. There's only one private room left. Mm-hmm. So if you want a private room, I definitely encourage you to apply sooner rather than later yeah. because um, the rest of them are shared. Some of them have shared bathrooms. Some of them don't. So you can look on the website and your pricing is going to go anywhere from twenty nine ninety seven, which is pay in full. Um, but there, again, there's, I think there's four payment plans or yeah, three payment really fun plans for that one. There's a lot of payment plans for that one. Cause we want this to be accessible for people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it goes all the way up to, I think 39 97, cause our highest price room was sold right away. So, um, that's the, that's the giant suite, the giant private suite that's yeah. sold right away. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, again, we are available in our DMS if you guys have any questions, but there's a lot of information on both of these links that you can check out. And um, honestly, if you want a free call with either of us for 10 or 15 minutes, just to like get to know us because you're like, well, I really am called to this, but I don't know these people super well and I wanna cultivate more of a connection. We are both more than happy to do that. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, and, and it's exactly what the card said that Daisy pulled that, if your soul is being called to this, you need to entertain it. You need to step into it. Don't let the fears of the timing or the money or the healing or the intensity or the, or the people or the, any of that get in your way. And if you need help moving through that, we're happy to support and coach you through that from now until the retreat, because this is, this is going to be life-changing. It's absolutely going to be life-changing for you. Beyond worth any of it. It's beyond yeah. worth, worth moving past any of those fears. 
Yeah. Because again, that's also in, in some fear, that's where we're going to really have that exponential growth too. So it's and honor. Both that, those so. Fears. Yeah. We both had those fears about money, oh, yeah. and about yeah. other people and working through that and investing despite that has yeah. made both of us soar exponentially to the point we are now living lives that are way beyond like phenomenal beyond what we could have imagined. So I'm really eager to invite you into this space to hold you, to embrace you, for you to embrace yourself. And, um, we're both here. If you need us. Hi, Diane. Thanks for being here. We're just about wrapping up, but you can definitely catch the replay and let us know if you have any questions. And I'm really excited to continue this show heal profoundly yeah. and only yeah, so the reason I'm starting it on this 13th of September is because I'm going to be away for Labor Day weekend, um, and we're obviously doing this today as our as our little sneak peek of Heal and the kinds of feedback you're going to be getting in this show, um, and really strategies that you're going to be able to implement right away. You know, there's already things that we talked about today that you guys can implement right away to begin to start getting yourself to a place where you can heal long-term, right? That's what enduringly means, long-term. So get ready. Stephanie Zito is going to be joining us for the first episode, which is on September 13th. So keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to be posting that event and definitely make sure to click going so that you get reminders and updates on that event. And I hope you have a good couple weeks until then. Daisy, do you you want to leave people with or... Yeah. I mean, you know, if you have any questions about even just the stuff that we talked about with healing, like if there's something that you're struggling with, with having that um, the intimacy or, you know, the, um, the patience with yourself, you know, feel free to message me or, or Laura about it, you know, because we've both been there. We've both experienced it so much. And we're just so happy that you guys joined us today. And, you know, again, you can message us about any questions you have anytime. Mm -hmm. and yeah. And I actually have a, um, a group chat for room for healing, oh, yeah. my, mm -hmm. my free private Facebook group. So if you join room for healing, um, you'll get access to the WhatsApp thread. And that's really what that is, is it's offering people an encrypted opportunity to have a conversation off of Facebook, which is public. Um, and to be able to just connect on more in a more intimate level, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I'm probably in there about once a week or so to give coaching feedback or to, you know, help support people, but it's really an opportunity for people to communicate a little bit more privately. Um, yeah. so that's an area where you can ask questions too, um, or share what's coming up in your field. Okay. You're welcome, Sherry. Thank you guys so much for being here. We love you so much. And this will also be posted on my YouTube and IGTV. So you guys can watch it there on the replay or refer other people to it if you think it would be supportive for them. And we are very excited to welcome those of you who are called into this sacred space of embrace, either virtually or in person. And we hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Bye guys.